um, I started getting very breathless. Um, oh, a long time ago now, two year, over two years maybe. But just thought it was getting older. Um, and was in denial for quite a long time. I didn't even have a doctor. I'd always been very strict, fit and strong. And um, just thought, put it down to getting older. And then eventually it was so bad, in fact I could hardly walk up a incline, that I had to get a doctor. And he, that day, the very day I saw him for the first time, he sent me straight to the Lewisham Hospital where they uh, removed fluid from the lung. And then they did all sorts of tests and said, probably I'm fine now, that's the end of the story. But six months later, the fluid built up again and I had to go back to Lewisham and again had further fluid removed. Um, they did further tests and they couldn't find anything wrong. And eventually they said I'd have to go to Guy's and have um, the lining of my lung um, sealed with talc. After I had the operation in Guy's, they asked me if I'd ever worked with asbestos. Uh, I think until then they thought I had TB. That was the sort of w that was the disease that was being suggested. Um, but then after the operation, when they'd obviously discovered the mesothelioma, I was asked if I'd ever worked with asbestos, and I said no. But then I remembered um, going back many, many years that I had actually worked in a room, in a classroom, which was, I felt sure, lined with asbestos. In fact, I had been told it was asbestos, but it was white asbestos and it was safe. And I'd taken that on trust. Someone came in from the council um, and inspected it and said, yes, it is asbestos, but it's white and it's safe. I keep wondering about those children. I'd like to know if any you know what the if there have been any repercussions for those children but I don't how do you know I mean I, I love my job and it's it's quite shocking to think that I paid that heavily for a job I really enjoyed sheer horror and everything was so dark you know waking up in the morning it was like um, dark f fear just took over and um, that, that went on for quite a long time, not enjoying waking up at all and wondering how I was going to cope with it. But it did eventually change. And um, obviously there are things that help. I have a book here with a different saying. It's a Buddhist book and every day of the year there's a new saying and there's a new picture. And that's helped because it sort of puts things into perspective a bit, you know, sort of, my candle isn't as tall as I thought it was going to be, you know, it's a shorter candle, it'll only burn for as not as long as I thought. Things like, little things like that just help you to, to get a grip on, on what is happening and puts it into perspective. And then you think, you know, how many people are dying in Iraq every day? This is crazy, you know, the, the importance one but it's your own life, so it's, it's, it's very, very hard to get to grips with. I mean, yesterday there was a play on the Radio 4, and it was a woman who had cancer and was dying of it. And it was amazing, because it was quite amusing. Amuse, it was an amusing way of talking about it, and they had lots of music in it as well. And things like, she, she felt ill. But she'd go out and people say, oh, you look really well. And that happens to me. You know, people always say, you look really well. I think, you know, if you knew what I felt like. And, you know, you meet people and they don't know. And they say, how are you? And you say, fine. If it wasn't for that bastard, it'd be fine, yeah. That sort of thing. And it was really funny hearing this play yesterday because I could relate to it all the way. I mean, she died in hospice in the end. But it was very, very well done and quite sensitively and amusingly done. And I could relate to everything in it. I'd quite like to have that play on tape. Yeah.